Yo, what's up guys? Tyler over here, and today I'll be doing a 10k Q&A special where I answer the questions that you guys left on my last video. Get ready. Now I'm here. channel. So guys, I just came back from the American Beatbox Champs. That event was crazy, you know, so you guys keep an eye out for all the videos to go up on Swiss Beatbox probably in the next few months. It's going to be insane. Now, you guys left me a lot of questions on the last video, so I hope I have the opportunity to answer them all. And if you guys have any further questions, put them in the comments section below. Now, the first question comes from Dubby, and he says, How does it feel to be ranked number one in the eliminations at the American Beatbox Champs? It feels freaking amazing to be ranked that high. Like, to be ranked number one out of 110 people is insane, you know? Like, so it, it feels amazing to be ranked that high, but it's honestly just like an honor to be ranked that high. Like, it's crazy, you know? Like, I still honestly don't even know how to react to that. Now, the next question is, does being a beatboxer by itself earn you enough money, or do you have to do other jobs on the side to earn money? Now that's actually a very tough question to answer. It's really gonna vary individual to individual because you are marketing yourself. It is a business. There are a lot of beatboxers out there who do make a living off it. Is it tough? Yes, but can you do it? Yes. Now I know personally, I don't really know if I have any like future plans to make a living off beatboxing. It'd be awesome if it ever worked out that way. But I do, you know, I do have a job and I do all that, you know, so it's tough, but it's possible. The next question is, what is the best way to start up a beatboxing YouTube channel? Now the answer to that is tricky, because it really depends on what you're interested in uploading. You have to be interested in what you're uploading, otherwise you're gonna get bored very quickly. And so as a beatbox, you know, upload freestyles, you know, tutorials, you know, just covers of songs, do whatever you want, originals, routines, just whatever you enjoy. You can do shoutouts from other people. There's so many different kinds of beatboxing channels out there. I feel like you can go anywhere with it, you know, even reactions on gaming or Omegle and stuff like that. You can go anywhere with that. Just remember, consistent content is key. The next question is, how does Michael Winslow make the guitar sound? So I'm like 99% positive he uses an effect pedal to distort his voice. You know, we saw him at the American Champs in 2014, and he was tapping a pedal whenever he did his guitar effect. And if you watch him on video, his foot will actually tap something off stage. So I think he is using an effect pedal to make that voice and that noise. Now the next question is, how many years does it take for a beatboxer to find their style? Now finding your own style is going to take a long time, but it will vary individual to individual. Keep that in mind. Really, when you find your style, you're going to be expressing yourself through music, using your own unique sounds, you know, your own ways and own patterns and rhythms. And you know, it can take time. It's not going to happen overnight, so keep that in mind. This one's not really a question, but it says, make a slizzer roll tutorial. I would! But I can't do that sound yet. You know, I've been trying to learn it forever and I just can't get it. The next question is, on a scale of 1 to 10, what shape is the color blue? Now, I feel like the only appropriate answer to this question is avocados or armadillos. Either one. The next question was asked a few times and it is, how old were you when you started beatboxing? I think it was about 16 when I started. It was junior year of high school, so it should be around 16 years old. Now the next question is, will you do a shout out video to Swiss Beatbox? Well the answer to that is yes. At the American Beatbox Champs we filmed one and also all the battles that were filmed at the American Beatbox Champs will be on Swiss Beatbox as well. Big shout out to Swiss Beatbox, Pepponi, and Maddox. The next question, it's, it's a good one, is uh, what do you think about the originality of new school beatboxers? So when we talk new school, I'm assuming we're talking about the online community and the young up-and-comers, you know, on TeamSpeak and all that. It's been a term that's been thrown around a lot. I don't think it's ever been, like, really defined. Because they, I've heard this term associated with people like P-Red and Villain and me, and I'm just, I don't really think we're, like, new school, you know? It's, it's weird. But so if we're talking, like, in my mind, new school, you know, the online community and such... You know, their, their technique is crazy, and you know, they're coming up with new stuff all the time. But you will see patterns, you know, throughout the online community and TeamSpeak. You'll, you'll hear a lot of hollow liberals. I haven't been able to say that at all today. You'll see stuff like that. You'll see uh, trends go through these communities and such. I think that they are crazy and innovative and insane. But sometimes, you know, some individuals may get trapped into a couple things like that. It's like, I don't know if that answers it at all. Whoops. This question. Woo! If you had to switch your sounds and or routines with another beatboxer, who would it be? What? First off, I don't want to switch my stuff with nobody, but if I had to pick two beatboxers, you know, over the, like, the past weekend, the American Champs, like, villain stuff is tight, right? It's so powerful, it's like so unique and technical, it's crazy. You know, if you battle him, you better be scared. But, uh, Gene, his music is just so moving, man. Like, you gotta love Gene's stuff, dude. I think that answers it. I think I... 
said I'd, I'd switch with them, even though I, I didn't say it. The next question is, how long have you been beatboxing for and what got you inspired? I've been beatboxing since my junior year of high school, and I think it's been around like six to seven years at this point. And uh, what got me inspired is that, you know, there was a kid in my class who came up to me and was like, Yo, dude, check out this beat I can do. And it was my humps by the Black Eyed Peas, and he did it. And I was like, oh, I want to learn that. And so I learned it, and then I went to YouTube after that and started Googling beatboxing and such, and I saw some Reaps 1 videos. And then it just kind of progressed from there, I guess. Now the next question is non-beatboxing related, and I do appreciate that. It is what kind of genre of music do you listen to, and do you have any favorite songs or artists? So for genres of music, I listen to a lot of stuff. Now mainly though, I listen to metal, like post-hardcore, I guess. You know, I've always listened to stuff like Bring Me the Horizon, Devil Wears Prada, and stuff like that. I used to listen to like Asking Alexander and stuff, but I haven't heard any of their new stuff at all. Sleeping with Sirens, all, all that stuff, right? And I've listened to that since high school. You know, but I do listen to a lot of electronic music like Dubstep, you know, Dat Sick and Downlink and all that stuff, because they're crazy, you know? It's a really good influence for beatboxing as well. And for favorite songs or artists, Bring Me the Horizon is one of my favorite bands. Circus Survive as well. well two top bands right there, no questions. Favorite songs though, uh, We Own the Night by Dance Gavin Dance. Can You Feel My Heart by uh, Bring Me The Horizon. Heck yeah, those are clutch. Oh, and another one I've been vibing to a lot is In The Name Of Love by Martin Garrix. Now the next question is, what was one of your most fun battles? Now I got about two battles in mind here. The first was the second battle I was ever in Midwest in 2015, I faced a villain. Like that was crazy, like they changed our times down to a minute right before the battle. You know, from a minute 30 to a minute, so we were both like, what's going on here? And we just battled each other, it was just so much fun, man. That kid gets in your face, all the pops, he's so crazy and powerful. That's one of them. Now the second is definitely the battle I just had with Trung Bao and uh, the American Beatbox Champs. That was such an intense battle and I loved every minute of it. The kid is such a humble person. He's so nice. Such a good character too. He's such a powerful beatboxer. Big up to Trung Bao, big up to Villain. So the next question I may have touched on earlier it is where did you learn beatboxing? So I started beatboxing when my friend introduced me to the song My Humps and he covered that and I was like, whoa, that's crazy. But mainly I learned beatbox through watching YouTube videos and mimicking other beatboxers and learning their sounds and routines. And then you go from there and learning that to developing your own stuff. So YouTube was a huge part in learning beatboxing. So James decided to ask me, when are you going to have an upload schedule? I upload every Thursday at noon. And if that's not what you're talking about, you're talking about certain kinds of videos, I like my freedom, boy. Now the next question is, does Villains and Audicles Inward Bass sound similar? I'm gonna say no. Um, when you hear Villains Inward Bass live, that is so deep, you know, I don't even know how he gets it that deep. And Audicles Bass is insane too, but I don't think they sound similar at all. The next question is, how long did it take you to learn beatboxing? So I've been beatboxing for around six or seven years, like I said, and uh, you know, in the first like month or so, I learned a lot of the basic sounds, you know, you keep progressing from there, but my main progressions have been in the last two years in terms of developing all my unique routines and styles and all that stuff. But, you know, it, it doesn't take seven years for everyone to learn that stuff. You know, you have kids like Komodo who showed up to the semifinals in the American Champs. He's been beatboxing for less than two years. So just keep that in mind. It could take anyone anytime. It just depends on the amount of dedication you have. I didn't start pushing it till later in my uh, years of beatboxing. Now I like this question. The next question is, what is your favorite beatbox sound and why? Now my favorite beatbox sound that I have right now is... <laughs> And really, it's because it's so powerful on mic, and it's such kind of like a wow factor, you know? It's crazy, and I think I don't I haven't heard anyone else do it yet, so it's one of my favorite sounds to be doing right now. The next question is, would you ever consider gaming lobby beatbox reactions? Now, I actually answered this question in my last Q&A video, and I'm still going to hold to that answer that I don't think on this channel I'm ever going to be doing gaming beatbox reactions, but I have been playing with the concept of doing like a weekly podcast, uh, you know, live streaming and talking over video games, you know, with a couple other beatboxers talking about beatboxing content, answering your questions. It'd be almost like a weekly Q&A session, or we'd be talking about, you know, a specific topic for like an hour or something. Now the next question is, how do I get stage presence? Now stage presence isn't something that you just get, you know, it's something by performing over and over and over again. You learn, you know, you go out there, you try different routines, different sounds, you figure out what they like, you figure out how to feed off the audience and how to make them react to certain things. It's really all about dynamics. You know, building things up the correct way, you know, bringing it down or leaving empty space when you should, and just kind of owning the stage as your own. I do plan on releasing a tutorial on this at some point, you know, maybe not a tutorial, but you know, more of like a tip thing to kind of help people along to developing that. The next question is, can you make a tutorial on the Bobbly Techno Bass? Now, if you're talking about the I actually touched on this in my tongue bass tutorial, check it out right here.
<laughs> the next question is, do you do tutorials? Well, the answer to that is, heck yeah, I do, right here. There's the playlist, all the tutorials that I've done, right here in this little playlist. Click it, watch them all, like them all, booyah. The next question is, do you speak English? If you do, speak it. Here I am, speaking English. Taladabia. <laughs> The next question is, is there a reason why you don't use throat bass that much? I think I use throat bass a decent amount, but I the main answer to this question is I try to vary all my beats and not oversaturate a sound, not to use it too much, you know, to keep everything different. Like, all my routines, in my mind, are distinctly different, you know? I can't pair two together and be like, these are exactly the same, or, you know, some may be borderline similar, but not, nothing is, like, the same. So, I think the main answer here is just keeping things varied. The next question is, how old are you? The answer to that question is 22. I am 22 years old. I have been on this earth for 22 years. That's crazy. Now the next question is, do you have any tips for building routines and routine structures? Let me preface this by saying that I actually am going to be making a tutorial or a tip video on making routines and structures. But, you know, I had someone at the American Champs actually ask me questions about this and pick my brain. And it was pretty awesome, you know, and I loved answering these questions. You know, for me, when I develop routines, you know, it's kind of like random, you know, I record things and different sounds and things. I think it sounds cool on my phone. And eventually I bring these pieces together. Like, I don't just sit down and try to like get a routine done. You know, some, some of these routines take months, you know, um, I, I let the pieces fall together in the end. Now the next question, I'm gonna word it in my own way, but is does braces impact doing liberals? Now I think a good person to ask this to would be Void. So if you know Void, go ask Void. Um, but he was doing liberals with braces on. So you can do that. And I know that I did remember him mentioning that when he got them off, like it felt totally different beatboxing without them on. So I think that whenever you get them removed, it will be different, it'll be a little bit of an adjustment period. But ask Void Empire that question. The next question is, what is your favorite hobby? Now the answer to that is beatboxing. Boxing. That's cliche, I know. Now the next question is, who is your inspiration for beatboxing? This is actually a really tough question to answer, mainly because you could look up to so many different beatboxers for so many different reasons. Like, you could look up to Reap's one because he has taken this art form so far, professionally, in just every, in every aspect, you know. And you could look at Gene because he just makes his music so beautiful. He expresses himself so well through beatboxing. And honestly, I keep mentioning Gene and Villain, but I'm being dead serious. Like, you can look at Villain because hey, that kid's passion is crazy for beatboxing. You know, and he keeps pushing these new technical things. It's so unique. It's crazy. You can look up to so many different beatboxers for so many reasons. And so, those are, I guess, three people that I came to mind. Now, the next question is, are you going to be doing private lessons anytime soon? So, I actually do have intentions to do private lessons in the future. I was trying to build up my subscriber base first. Um, I got to find some free time, but then I will eventually start booking private lessons. I don't know about any rates yet or any time spans, but I'll keep you guys updated on that when I figure more things out with it. The next question is, are you going to Midwest next year? I have full intentions to go to that battle next year, but that is a year from now. So, you know, things could change between there and there, but right now, I have intentions to go. The next question is, what is your next goal? The main key is to have a lot of goals, guys. You know, for YouTube, 100K. That would be insane. If that ever happened, I'd freaking freak out, you know? But in terms of, like, beatboxing, you know, maybe not necessarily battle titles, but performing. Getting more and more performing, more and more stage time, you know, with bigger audiences, bigger venues, and all that stuff. Those are goals. The next question is, did you ever think you would get this good at beatboxing? I actually had this conversation with Void at the American Chance. They were both like, we never thought we'd actually be here. We just started beatboxing for fun, you know, and just, really it's just when your passion takes off, you know, so it's really not, I ever thought I would be here or be this guy, just, you know, just happened, you know, because I followed beatboxing. The next question is, what is the first beatboxing video you ever watched? Now, I'm not 100% sure this is the video, but it was a video of Reaps1 being interviewed, and I'm pretty sure that was a lot of beatboxers' first videos, because when you type in beatboxing, it's one of the first videos that comes up. He's being interviewed, he teaches a couple sounds, you know, and so I think that was the first video, I think. The next question is, what do you think about people with big foreheads? People with big foreheads, like this guy? I love people with big foreheads. Sub Botical. The next question is, are you making a Grand Beatbox Battle wildcard? Now the time for submitting videos has already passed, but I figured I'd go ahead and explain why I didn't make one. I didn't make a wild card because even if I did win, I don't know if I'd be able to, you know, afford to get there, or even have the time to go to the Grand Beatbox Battle wildcards, you know, and getting off work and all that stuff. So that's really more so why I didn't make a wild card. 
Now the next question is, can you do a mic technique tutorial or a teeth liberal tutorial? All right, so for the teeth liberal tutorial, go to Wobbles. Wobbles has a dope tutorial out there for that already. That's his sound too. So go to that tutorial, check that out. And for a mic technique tutorial, I do plan on coming out with one. I have like a whole concept of when I release my album, I'm gonna have like two and a half months, you know, where the, the, that content is gonna be uploaded. And I'm gonna create like an entire like tutorial package of like routines, mic techniques, stage presence to go about all of that. And so you will be seeing that in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and asking me your questions and big up and thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. I honestly never thought I'd hit 10,000 subscribers. Next goal is 100K. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like, comment on the video. If you know, if you have a question yourself, I will answer them in this video if you comment them below. If, you, if I didn't get to them or if you didn't get to comment in time, put them in this video and I will also respond to those. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. You know, share this video with anyone who thinks wants to learn a little bit more about Tyler W. And, uh, uh, just have a good day, guys.